Hi everyone, so in today's quick tip video I'm going to be talking about fonts. This question relating to single stroke fonts comes up a lot in messages to me personally or in our Sunday night YouTube lives and I have covered this subject before but this is just another quick kind of update on a couple more fonts. Single stroke fonts you usually have to pay for and there are various places on the internet that you can look to go and purchase them. There are a couple of fonts that I use that are free from dafont.com. They're not single stroke fonts but they can be made to look like single stroke fonts depending on the size that you draw them and depending on the size of the nib on the pen that you use. So the two that I'm going to look at today specifically are, the first one is called Banks Miles Single. Despite the fact it's called Banks Miles Single, it is not a single stroke font, okay? So it's called Bank Miles Single Line and you can see here it has got double lines. It's not a true single stroke font. I am using um, Canvas Workspace for Computer, by the way, so that that is how I'm able to pull the fonts through that I have installed on my computer. So I'm just going to duplicate this and then I'm going to come back up to where the fonts are. And the other font that I use is called KG Rise Up. So Okay, now again, it's not a true single stroke font, but both of these can work and you can get them to look like a single stroke depending on the size that you get your scan and cut machine to draw them and depending on the size of the nib in the pen that you're going to use. Okay, so let's just click on the first one and go to the edit icon and we can see over here in the edit icon that this word is just about eight inches wide and just under an inch high. Now I personally wouldn't use a greeting that size on the front of a card. I'd maybe go probably no more than two and a half inches wide, something like that. So I'm going to take the width down to two and a half inches and then in this particular font, it makes the height 2.80, so just over a quarter of an inch high. I'm going to come to this other one, the KG Rise Up, and this one is four and a half inches wide and just under an inch and a half high. So again, I'm going to take the width down to 2.5, and that's going to make this just about a quarter, three quarters of an inch high. So it's something that you're going to have to play with. Okay, so I'm going to save these, but the first thing I'm going to do is select them both and come up here and make them a draw line. Because in Canvas Workspace for Computer, anything you put on your mat is automatically assigned as a cut line. If you want to draw it, you have to tell the software to change that line to a draw line. So they're now both a draw line. I'm going to say file, export to computer and send it over via Wi-Fi. So that's now done. Okay, so I'm going to come over to the scan and cut machine. I'm going to come to retrieve data from Canvas. Here is my two words. I'm just going to go into edit, choose the three red boxes, choose the box on the right hand side which chooses everything on the mat. I'm going to say OK, object edit and group. And I'm just going to group them for now because it might make them easier for me to move them around the mat when I come to draw them in different style of pens. So I'm just going to bring, using the arrows, I'm just going to bring them over here because I've got my piece of card which is stamping up basic white card and I've got it loaded from the top left hand corner of the mat. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just draw these with the standard small pen that Quite often you get free with a scan and cut machine. So 
You sometimes get one pen in the little holder, sometimes you get a set of six, but this is the one that the pen fits into and the lid closes over, okay? So I'm just gonna put the pen in, take the blade out of my scan and cut machine, put this pen in, before I actually draw it, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to hit the home button actually and go to the settings and just make sure what, what draw pressure I've got. So I'm going to go into the settings and find where it says draw pressure and it's on the default. So I've got a black box with a white zero. Anything you see in a black box is the default size. So that's all okay. So I'm gonna say okay. Go back to retrieve data from canvas, edit, select everything, okay, object edit and group. Say okay, and then just move them over on this piece of card again. Okay, so I've got standard draw speed, standard draw pressure and I'm using one of the small little bullet tip pens that you do sometimes get free with the machine. So I'm going to say OK, 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 select and draw and because I assigned the words in Canvas Workspace as a draw line, they're showing up here on the mat. If you ever send anything over from Canvas Workspace and you go to select draw and it doesn't show, it means it's because you've not assigned it as a draw line. By default, in Canvas Workspace for computer, everything shows up as a cut line. I'm going to say start and I'm just going to get the machine to draw those two words in this pen. Then I'm going to move the words on the mat and draw them with a different pen. Okay, so if you come and have a look at these, I'll show you them all at the end, but for now, because of the fact that this particular pen has got this bullet tip end, these do look like they've been drawn as a single line, okay? I'm gonna take that out and just put the lid on it so it doesn't dry up. And now I'm going to try some different pens using the universal pen holder and the small barrel pen holder. Depending on which pen I use will fit in either of these holders. I've actually labelled mine with my P-Touch for the simple reason I did a whole YouTube live a few weeks ago using the wrong holder. I've got three of these. I've got the one that came with my calligraphy pen. I've got the small barrel pen holder and the universal pen holder, and they all look the same. The only difference is the diameter of the hole in the top where you put your pen is different. So as I say, I've labeled them. So I'm going to just first of all try a regular writing pen. So this is just like any old type of ballpoint pen. This just happens to be a gold one, okay? And I'm gonna see which one it fits in better. So I think this one's gonna have to go in my universal pen holder. So what I'm going to do, I've got a piece of scrap card here. This is the same type of card that I'm going to be drawing on that's loaded onto my mat. I'm just going to position it in the bottom of the holder, pop the universal holder into the cradle, and then while I'm holding the piece of card on the bottom, I'm going to drop the pen into the holder so it, this isn't, you need about three hands to do this, so that the nib is touching the piece of card, and then I'm going to lock it into place and take it out. So that should now be set, technically, for the piece of card it's going to write on. So I'm going to put this into the machine, lock it into position. I'm going to say, OK, because that last one's finished. I'm going to hit the back button. And I'm going to choose the two words I've just drawn in the blue. And I'm just going to move them down 
on this piece of card. I'm going to say OK, 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 select and draw. I'm not touching the draw pressure or anything. I'm leaving it all on the default just to see what kind of results I get and, um, you know, how it looks with each of these different pens I'm just testing out today. So I'm going to say start. So again, I'm just going to try and move you in a little bit, but I will show you all the results together at the end. So this one now, I'm not sure how well you'll see it, but you can see that it is double lines using this particular pen nib. So I'm going to unload the pen, take this pen out, and I'm going to try one of these Stadler triplet roller, this is called. And this is a kind of, it's a bit triangular shape, this pen. This is one of these you buy in like a set. I think I picked this up in the supermarket. So again, I'm going to see which holder it will fit in. So this one looks as though it will fit in the in the small barrel pen holder. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I've got my piece of card just sat here on the bottom of the cradle. I'm going to put the small barrel pen holder in, drop the pen in so that the nib touches the card, and then I'm going to lift and lock and see if that will hold and it looks as though it might so we'll go back to the machine i'll pop the pen back in i'm going to say okay because that's now finished cutting i'm going to hit the back button i'm going to say edit and again using the directional arrows i'm just going to move this down i'm going to say okay 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 select and draw and see what result we get using this pen. Okay, so that's another one done. So I'm going to unload the pen holder. So the next one I'm going to try is a Sharpie Ultra Fine Point Marker. Let's see which holder this will fit in. Now that won't fit in my small barrel pen holder, but it usually will fit in my universal pen holder. So again, I'm doing exactly the same. I'm using the same cradle, the same piece of card that I'm drawing on. I'm using all the same settings in the machine. I'm using the same words at the same size. So I'm not touching anything at all. And we're just gonna look at the end and see the different results that you get using different pens with different nibs, okay? So I'm gonna take that one out, I'm gonna go back to the machine, pop this one in the machine, lock it in. Okay, now this one hasn't come out very good for some reason. Now it might be that the pens move in the holder so I'll look at that. So I'm gonna, just going to flip you back, take the pen out, come back to the holder, and I'm not touching the pen or anything. I'm just going to put it back in the holder, and I can see that the nib has moved with the pressure, so it's not touching the piece of card, and that's why it's not drawn very good. So that might be just the total pressure on the machine or it might just be that I need to put a bit more tape around my pen, um, you know, and try it again. So that's that one. So the, the next one I'm going to use is a Stamping Up, Stamping Right marker. So again, I just need to see which one it fits in. So this one's going to have to be the universal pen holder. So I'm going to pop that back into the cradle. I'm using the bullet tip end, not the brush tip end. The brush tip ends will bend easily. And depending on the pressure on your machine, you can ruin the tip. So for drawing, if I'm using these to draw, you know, greetings on a, on a card, um, I want a personalised greeting that I've not got in a stamp, let's say, I would always use the bullet tip end. So I'm making sure that the holder is in the cradle and that I'm, I've got the pen touching the piece of card that's sat in the bottom. 
and then I'm going to lock it in and take this out. Now that feels a bit loose, so I'm going to do it again. This pen might need a bit of tape around it, and I'm going to put the pen in, lock it in, and then take it off and put this back in the machine and see how we go. So I'm going to pop that in. Okay, so that one's not too bad. It's started off a little bit shaky at the beginning, but in the main, it's not too bad. As I say, I would probably put a bit of tape around this and, you know, I, I know I will get a much better result. So let's just flip you back. So the last one I'm going to try, I'm going to try and see if an ordinary ballpoint pen will fit in my universal holder and see if this will do anything. So this is just a regular, you know, ordinary, this is actually a stamping up pen. I'm gonna drop it into the universal holder, lock it in place, take it out, and I can feel that this one's moving actually already. So this one might need a bit of tape. So let's just see if I've got any tape handy and see if this makes any difference. Just gonna get a bit of masking tape, just put a bit of tape around here and just see if this will give it a little bit more grip. It might not, it might not work, but it's just a pen I've got on my desk, so I just thought I'd try it. So I've got universal pen holder. It won't fit in the small barrel pen holder, it's too big. So I'm gonna drop it, drop it in, lock it back in place. It's, help, it's holding a bit better, so we'll see. Pop this into the machine and then do exactly the same. Okay, so let's bring you back. We'll unload the mat, take this off and bring my pen in. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Right, so... The first one here is with the normal little pen holder and the small pens. This looks like it's a single stroke font purely and simply because of the size of the tip on the end of the pen, okay? All these have all been drawn in exactly the same size. I've done nothing other than move the words down the page. So that's the first one. The second one was this Scribblicious gold pen. This is basically just a regular normal pen, just um, it's gold ink instead of using, you know, black or blue like we would normally do use in everyday life. This was in the universal pen holder, okay? And basically I'm just, you know, I've got the two out and I was just going to use whichever pen fitted in whichever holder. So this one, you should be able to see now, as particularly on this here, double lines. And that's because this nib is very fine. It's just a regular fine writing pen. So although Banks Miles Single has got the word single in its name, it's not a single stroke font and th and this is kind of what I wanted to try and highlight now if you drew any of these <coughs> smaller you may well get more of a single stroke effect with you know with all these different pens I've used by making the words smaller so you do have to play around so that's the gold pen so let me just, so the next one is the turquoise blue and that was the Stadler Triplet Roller. None of these tell me what size the nib is, but again, it's a very fine tip nib. You know, something like an everyday type ballpoint pen, I would say. So again, it's, you know, not bad. But you can clearly see it's double lines at this size. The next one was the purple, which is the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point. 
And again, I don't know what the, po the point size is on the nib, but it's very fine. And again, you can see it struggled a bit here, but that's because the pen had moved in the holder. It's tried its best to make it look like a single stroke font here. So again, you'd probably get a decent result with this if you made your words smaller using one of these pens. The next one is the Stampin' Up! Stampin' Right marker. And I've used the bullet tip end, which is a 0 0.5 millimeter. It does tell you on the Stampin' Right markers. Again, you know, based on the two different fonts, again, you can clearly see that they're double lines, but I know I've, from past experience, I've used these markers to draw greetings. And if you make your greetings smaller, you will get a result that looks like a single stroke font. Okay. And then the last one, which was just, you know, an extra thought, this is just a regular stamping up, regular everyday ballpoint pen in black that I had on my desk. And again, just trying it to see how it looks. So what I'm trying to point out here, the object of this exercise is the results that you will get will be determined by the pen that you're using with the nib size of the pen and will be determined by the size that you make your design in Canvas Workspace or on your computer. So if I went back in and I changed the size down for these two words and put all the pens in again, I would probably get a different result. I may get more of a single line font with some of the pens rather than others, depending on how small I made my words. So, you know, if these were greetings, if this was happy birthday and happy birthday or happy anniversary or get well soon, depending on the pen that you use, and the size that you draw it, you will get a different result. As I say, I have covered all this before. There is um, a YouTube live playlist on my channel. And back in 2019, I did a whole Sunday night live on all the different pen holders and the pens. So that might be worth going to, you know, to go back and have a look at. But this question comes up an awful lot about where do you find single line or single stroke fonts and do they work and just because this font is called bank smile single line doesn't mean it is a single line usually as i say single line or single stroke fonts as they as they know you normally have to pay for but again if you're going to buy them i would check before you buy them with the designer and ask you know, if I draw this word with an electronic cutting machine and I draw it, at, you know, four inches wide, will it still be a single line? And if they say yes, then, you know, that might be worth investing in because then it wouldn't matter how small or how big you drew the word if it's going to come out as a single line. But as I say, just for the experiment, this particular one, apart from using the very first pen with the slightly thicker bullet tip end that's the only one that looks like it's single line compared to all the others and that's because of the size I've drawn it in anyway I hope that's helpful please give the video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I'll see you in the next video thank you